Hello, everybody. One of the common questions that I get here on my channel is what type of frost cloth and hoops I use. Since I am coming up on the season where I heavily rely on these tools in my Ohio garden, I thought I'd share today the specifics about my frost cloth and hoop setup, as well as the scenarios in which I use them. Now, I'm not affiliated with any of these brands or companies. These are just the products that I've found through years of trial and error have worked really well in my garden. So first up are my wire hoops. They provide the support for this entire structure. I use 76 inch wire hoops from Agricultural Solutions. I've also tried the 54 inch hoops, but find myself using the 76 inch size much more often. Now these are galvanized 10 gauge steel and they ship straight. And then I prefer to kind of pre-shape them or bend them into this arch shape prior to putting them into the ground. To do this, I just wrap them around a pole and kind of bend them into shape. I insert both ends about six inches into the soil just to make sure that they stay put. Now the manufacturer recommends spacing at about five to eight feet apart. I always kind of eyeball mine and I think I end up spacing them closer to probably about four feet apart. Now I have tried the PVC pipe arches in the past and I like these metal ones much better. Now if you want to be a little more do it yourself, you can also just buy rolls of this wire and cut them to the size hoops that you like. I know this company, Agricultural Solutions, sells rolls of 500 feet and I'm sure you you could get them at your local hardware store as well. Now these hoops are great because once I have them in place, I can easily swap out the frost cloth for insect netting or shade cloth as the season progresses. You can also use the clear plastic film over these as well. But at this point in the season, the frost cloth is where it's at. I predominantly use one and a half ounce weight frost blankets. These provide heavy freeze protection down to 24 degrees Fahrenheit, and they're supposed to keep plants six to eight degrees warmer than the outside temperature. Now this particular frost cloth allows for about 50% light transmission, as well as being semi-permeable, so it allows some air and water through. Now if the temperatures are supposed to drop really, really low. Every once in a while, I will double up on this fabric for even more protection. Although there is three ounce frost cloth available. It's just a rare occasion when I do this. So rather than buy a bunch of extra, it's easier for me just to double it up. I've been getting my frost cloth from Garden Porch. They used to be called Ag Fabric. And I specifically like the seven foot by 25 or 50 foot size. This works well in the longer rows of my garden. And actually a six foot width would be slightly better with the hoop size that I'm using, but I just roll up the excess and pin it down. I also have a few of the 10 by 20 foot, two ounce covers, which protect down to 20 degrees Fahrenheit and work well when I'm overwintering veggies in my raised beds. These types of frost cloth are widely available and Agrabon is probably the industry standard, but I'd say mainly just opt for the weight and the size that is gonna fit your garden well. The nice thing is that if these are stored properly, they can be used again and again, season after season. Just be careful to protect them from mice in storage because they do like to chew holes through this fabric. Now that I've got my hoops all covered with my frost cloth, I've got to secure everything in place so the spring wind doesn't undo all this work. My go-to are galvanized landscape fabric pins. Mine are six inches and made of galvanized 11 gauge steel. I've used rocks, bricks, pieces of wood, T-posts, basically anything I've had on hand to secure these frost cloths to the ground and keep them from flying away. But through trial and error, I found that the fabric pins work the absolute best for me. The tighter you can secure this fabric, the less chance the wind has of getting a hold of it and ripping it free. And the pins really do a great job of securing. I typically come through and pin one side in with just a few inches of fabric left over. And on the other side, I tightly roll up the excess fabric and pin over top of it. I pin my insect netting exactly the same way, and this does an excellent job of keeping any and all insect pests out, as well as critters like rabbits and squirrels. Now typically, as long as I pin them in tightly enough, that's all I need to do to keep everything secure for the season. Once in a while, if we're having some intense wind, I will close pin the fabric to the hoops. 
These coated metal extreme clothespins do a much, much better job than the standard wooden clothespins. And a little side story here. My sister actually got these for me one year for Christmas, and I was at the time like, oh, wow, thanks, <laughs> clothespins. But after I used these just one or two times, I was like, these are the best clothespins in the whole world. And that's apparently how you know that you're getting older as you get excited about clothespins, but these really are good. Great for pinning down frost cloth. Awesome if you hang out a lot of laundry to dry like I do here. Now I do have one cheat product that I use in the case of emergencies. Emergencies like it's eight o'clock at night and I forgot to check the forecast and suddenly realize that the temperatures are gonna drop really, really low and I don't have time to set this whole thing up. In those cases, I use one of these all-in-one tunnels. Now I had one that I used for many years, but the place that I got it from no longer carries them. So just recently I found a similar tunnel from Haxnix. What's lovely about these is that the wire hoops are already threaded through the frost cloth, and this just opens up accordion style, and you pop the stakes into the ground. The setup is super easy and quick. This is easier to do if it's windy or if you only have one person. The only thing I don't like about these is sometimes these hoops tend to slide out, and it's a pain to thread them back through, and I don't find that they're quite as durable as the separate frost cloth and hoops are. So those are the products that I use, but when do I rely on frost cloth? So there's a couple of different scenarios when I will use my frost cloth. The first is this time of year. So early spring when I'm first planting out my cool season crops. While all the things that I'm planting right now are quite cold tolerant, it can be really stressful for transplants, even those that are well hardened off to go out into temperatures that are dipping below freezing at night, or in particular temperatures that are fluctuating very drastically as they tend to do here in Ohio in the spring. Now, in an ideal scenario, I wait to put transplants of say broccoli or cabbage or cauliflower out until I see at least five days in a row in the forecast where the temperatures are staying above freezing at night. But as you can imagine, this doesn't always happen. And sometimes I have to get planting. So if I can only get a two or three day stretch, I will plant my transplants out and then almost immediately cover them with frost cloth. I'll use this cloth until the plants get well established or until those temperatures even out and warm up a little bit. Now for veggies that I've direct sown, I typically won't pull out the frost cloth unless the temperatures are dipping below about 25 degrees Fahrenheit at night. Now this varies by crop, but if you'd like more specifics about the low temperatures that different vegetables can handle and when to protect them, definitely check this video out. But direct sown seedlings by their nature are better acclimated to those temperature swings and cold nighttime temperatures. Some seedlings, lettuce is a great example, are also more cold tolerant than their mature counterparts. So little tiny lettuce seedlings, rather than bringing out the frost cloth set up, I typically will just put some chopped leaf mulch around them to protect them from cold temperatures and that works well. Now another scenario where I use frost cloth in the spring is to protect early blooming fruit plants. Peaches and strawberries, I'm looking at you. For the last four or five years, I've had to cover up my strawberry patch because it's been in full bloom and we get a late hard frost. Rather than risk losing my entire crop for the year, I simply pull out one of my larger frost cloths. So this is where I like to use those much wider, say the 10 or 20 foot wide frost cloths. Just cover up the entire patch and loosely pin it into the ground. I don't use the hoops. I just lightly lay the fabric across the plants. And this works really well. Same thing with the peaches on a tree that's small enough. I'll just drape the fabric over the crown of the tree and loosely tie it at the base. Sometimes some of the blooms that are kind of butting up against the fabric will still get hit, but at least I'm saving some of them. Now the nice thing about frost cloth fabric is that while it can keep seedlings a little bit toastier and cozier, it doesn't create that intense greenhouse effect like the clear plastic can. So if we have an unseasonably warm sunny day in the spring, I don't have to worry about rushing out and getting that cover removed. Whereas with the plastic, I would because it could fry my young seedlings. Typically, if I see a stretch of nice 
nice temperate weather forecasted again five days or more or so I will come out and just pull the frost cloth half off typically I'll unpin one side roll it up just weight it down with some boards or some stones and that way when the temperatures inevitably fall again I can pop it back on pretty easily now in theory the frost cloths could be used to get a jump start on planting your warm season crops as well say if you wanted to plant something like tomatoes or peppers out a little early I personally just don't like to risk it but I know it works for a lot of people so typically I won't plant out till May 15th but if I wanted to go in with tomatoes say at the beginning of May when there's still that risk of pretty chilly nights, the frost cloth can help offer some protection. I do use the cloths to protect my warm season crops at the end of the season. A good example of this is I almost always have green beans in at the very end of the season and by covering them with frost cloths I'm typically able to get one or two more pickings into October which is pretty nice. Now my first fall frost is typically mid-October, but I usually don't have to pull out the frost cloth to protect my cool season crops in the fall till about the beginning of November. At this point, I'm pretty close to harvest with everything. So once I get those frost cloths on, they're gonna stay on until my harvest is done. And the final scenario where I use frost cloths is for overwintered crops. I grow overwintered onions, various greens, and carrots with great success this way. It would be nice to have a more permanent setup where I had something a little more sturdy, but it does the trick for me. But I will admit this is not without its problems. The first is that these are not sturdy enough to support a heavy snow load. So if you were to get a lot of snow, these hoops and cloths are probably going to collapse, and if you get enough snow, you risk crushing the plants underneath. I guess that's the one good thing about the lack of snow that we've had in Midwestern Ohio for the last couple of years is this is not a problem I've had to deal with. The other and probably bigger problem is that these tunnels make the perfect winter habitat for voles. These tunnels are safe and warm and protected and most importantly, full of food. So they're the perfect place for little voles to come and hang out. And they will wipe out an entire crop before you even know it if you're not on top of things. So this happened to me a while ago. A farm that I worked at had very bad vole pressure and I had a beautiful crop of late season cauliflower planted. I knew they were close to maturity, but I hadn't checked on them in about a week or a week and a half. I finally went out to harvest and opened up the frost cloth only to realize that those voles had nibbled those big, beautiful cauliflower heads down right to the stem. <laughs> It was so depressing. So don't be like me. I just want you to be aware that this is a potential problem. There are, of course, deterrents you can use for voles, as well as just simply setting up mouse traps inside your tunnels. But just if you're going to use this technique for late fall and overwintering plantings, and you are in an area that has voles, know that they will be attracted to this setup. Well, I've got to finish up getting my frost cloths and hoops set up, but if you found today's video helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel, Growfully with Jenna. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.